Hey guys, Keaton here with TechSmart, and today we're going to be comparing the brand new Samsung Gear 2 versus the Samsung Gear 2 Neo. These are some of the hottest smartwatches out on the market right now, and these are kind of Samsung's new approach in the smartwatch game after releasing the Galaxy Gear last year. So how do these guys go ahead and stack up? Let's go ahead dive in and take a look. So up first is hardware and specifications. Now the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo feature very similar specifications and in hardware, but the one feature that separates them apart and makes them have two different price tags and to be exact an extra hundred dollars is the camera found on the Gear 2. So up first, the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo feature a 1.63 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 320 by 320 and on the inside there's a 1 GHz dual core processor with 512 megabytes of RAM. Sticking with internals, there's an accelerometer, gyroscope, and heart rate sensor, and that's one of the big things Samsung is trying to push in 2014 is that health factor. There's 4 gigabytes of internal memory, so that means you can put tons of apps, movies, just take a lot more pictures than you could before. And both these guys are both dust and water resistant, so that means they are IP67 certified, a big feature found on the Samsung Galaxy S5, and personally one of my favorite features all around. Both these guys rock an IR blaster, which really ties into turning on your TV and just being able to control your TV with the watch. And maybe one day we'll be able to unlock our cars with one of these watches made by Samsung, so that'd be a really cool feature. Now, both these guys rock a 300 milliamp hour battery, which is decent battery for a smartwatch, but keep in mind, it's a smartwatch and you're going to have to charge it any way you look at it. Now, the Gear 2 here is the only one that features this, and this is a camera, which is a 2 megapixel camera with 720p HD video capabilities that is 0.1 megapixels greater than the Galaxy gear and I think the camera looks pretty decent for being a smartwatch camera and that is on the bezel and not on the wrist strap which means both these watches have interchangeable bands which allows the user to kind of get funky and creative depending on the season or mood they're in. So both the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo charge via a battery cradle which is still pretty weird considering I would just love to have a micro USB port on the underside of the watch but the battery cradle isn't as weird looking as it was with the Galaxy Gear but nonetheless it's just still really weird that you have to put your watch in a cradle and then put a micro USB into the cradle. And then rounding it out here for the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo, it features a home button which is probably one of my favorite features. I know it's very silly, but think about it. Instead of having to swipe down constantly from whatever menu you are in and how intricate you've gone into the OS, you just hit the home button and it takes you right home where most of the core functionalities and features lie. So overall, both of the watches feel fantastic on your wrist, but if you're looking for a watch that features just a little bit more metal, the Gear 2 is definitely for you. Moving on to software here, the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo feature the exact same experience in terms of software, and this software experience running Samsung's Tizen wearable platform is different than the Galaxy Gear's software experience. So this year's software is a lot more intuitive and allows for much more customization than the software found in the Galaxy Gear. Some functionalities such as the S Health integration and Watch On, which optimizes the IR blaster, are really some of my favorite things found in the smartwatch, and I think Samsung took some of the lacking attributes of the Galaxy Gear and really put it on steroids and just actually made the smartwatch worth wearing. It really ties back to the gear manager found on your Samsung device and just a little side note here this watch only worked with 17 devices made by Samsung and we'll go into that a little bit later but I think it complements it very well and I think the gear manager kind of hosts the majority of the functions that you cannot change on the gear 2 or gear 2 neo itself also some of my favorite things on here are being notified and being able to respond to notifications or emails or text messages using s voice and I think Samsung has boosted the s voice performance this year on the watch and it's surprisingly accurate and it's just one of those things that if I am alone and I want to talk to my wrist to respond to a notification, it's most definitely something that I'll do. So overall, I think the software experience on here and having Samsung run ties in on all other wearables this year is a much needed integration and just one of the favorite things that I liked about on both smartwatches. So transitioning on here, it is usage and looks. So the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo, again, look very similar. They share the exact same band and both of them are customizable, but the only real difference between the two is how much metal is on it. So the Gear 2 does kind of go for more of a premium look in my opinion. It has a little bit more metal on the bezel versus the Gear 2 Neo and I kind of would compare them to the Pebble and Pebble Steel. I think of the Gear 2 as being the Pebble Steel and kind of having that premium look with more metal and the Gear 2 Neo kind of being the original Pebble with a little bit more plastic just kind of going for that same design. So both of them feel premium nonetheless and some of the cool things I like about both is the comfortable band and kind of appealing to the more friendly comfortable eye will give consumers the ease of use and just kind of give them that 
that sense of reassurance and allow them to adopt a smartwatch without them feeling that it is just one of those things that is a cool versus one of those things where it's a futuristic piece of weird tech that they don't want to get into. So overall, I think the usage and feel of the easy operating system and comfortable features of both the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo are fantastic on this year's wearables. So moving on here, it's the App Store, and both the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo have a lot more integrations than ever before, and this is kind of one of the big lacking attributes found in the Galaxy Gear. So the App Store is really driven through Gear Manager, and while there's not a lot of applications, and seriously, if you compare the Pebble App Store to this, the Pebble App Store blows it out of the water times 50 zillion. It is seriously limited, and I think that's kind of one of the lacking things to the Gear 2 and just any of Samsung's wearables. While there are some applications made by Samsung that do work, they're very functional, and they're kind of different than the Galaxy Gear's initial applications, having that developer support is really what's going to keep people attached to these smartwatches, and I think that's why people are so attached to Pebble. Obviously, they were the first in the space, but their Pebble App Store is really emphasized by a lot of developers, and there's a lot of cool things, such as being able to store notes on your watch, or even being able to tweet from your watch, and sharing that LTE connection from your phone to send the tweet out. So I think things like that are what the App Store is really lack on the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo, and I think it's coming down to Samsung's going to need to just pay developers and give them a lot of incentives to have applications developed for their wearables because seriously, it is the only thing that I would really not want to use this thing every day for because of the lacking applications found on both watches. But in terms of some of the other integrations such as the health or just being able to go ahead and turn your TV on, those are some of the cool things that I do like about the watch. And I think the whole health integration by having it not be a third party app, but a first party application and just a first party integration on both the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo are just some of the cool things and some of the trade-offs that you're going to have to take whether you pick up the Gear 2 or Gear 2 Neo. Moving on here, it's compatibility, and this is one of the biggest problems with any Samsung wearable to date, and that is the fact that any Samsung wearable only works with Samsung devices, and it's not every single Samsung device out there, it's only 17 of them, and while they are pretty much populated by a lot of people, and a lot of people do own these, for those who are on iOS or even Windows Phone, which has zero wearable support, uh, it's a problem, and the fact that only 17 devices can actually optimize the cool features of the Gear Fit, the Gear 2, and the Gear 2 Neo, that really sucks. And I think the best way for your Samsung to really sell more wearables and to kind of have it become bigger and better is to open up the floodgates to just all of Android. Not everyone owns a Samsung device. People own HTC, LG phones, Motorola phones, and even more phones at that matter. Allowing people to use these for any type of devices would really drive sales through the roof and allow people to actually experience some of the cool things that all of these wearables really do feature. And I think Samsung trying to monopolize the market and just get everyone to switch over to Samsung devices is a good tactic on paper, but in actuality, that's not going to work. And that's why Pebble is selling so many smartwatches because it's available for both iOS and Android. So Samsung, please just allow every single Android device to, to optimize these Samsung wearables. And trust me, you guys will sell a lot more and maybe even start to get that developer push that you guys really do want. So up next here is battery life, and this is one of the biggest things most consumers are going to need to understand. So the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo features a 300 milliamp hour battery, which means you're going to get similar battery experience in both, and again, with any type of smartphone or any type of device, battery life does vary depending on how much you use it, and with normal use and just getting notifications using the S Health integrations, I was able to get around two full days on a single charge, and yes, that is using the weird battery cradle that you do have to use to recharge both devices. So I think that's pretty standard for smartwatches right now, and although the Pebble Steel in my testing was able to get around three full days with just normal wear and use, I think it's still very respectable for the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo because they do feature some other integrations that the Pebble Steel does not have, and the display is colored. So here's the big thing with wearables. These are wearables, these have small batteries, these are meant to go on your body. If you want a wearable to last for days upon end, go ahead and Velcro a backup battery to your neck or wherever you want on your body and plug it in your wearable and you will never have to see the battery ever be recharged for weeks upon end. These have small batteries, again, because they go on your body. This is a smartwatch. This is meant to do things that other watches such as a Rolex or Tag Heuer cannot do. This does not just tell the time and give you the calendar date. This can go and tell your heart rate or take pictures or respond to notifications. And I think this is one of the biggest problems that I see consumers having with wearables is they don't want to recharge their wearables. Listen, if you want to be up to date with your notifications and you want to be able to wear tech, you are going to need to accept this because this is just what it is. With smartphones, batteries started off really small and with the original iPhone, 
battery life sucked, but as time evolved, batteries got smarter, they got bigger, and they got even better, and that's why we're able to get upon a day of just full use nonstop with our smartphones. So I think that's one of the things consumers are going to need to accept. And personally, I don't mind recharging my wearable one every two days. I'm charging my phone every night, having to charge my MacBook. It's not that big of a deal for me, but maybe that's because I'm so immersed in the tech atmosphere. So for an average consumer, if that's something that you really don't want to be doing is having to recharge a wearable that you can use and really optimize throughout the day, then I don't really think the Gear 2 or Gear 2 Neo is right for you. So as for new features, most of these guys share the exact same features, but there's only one feature, which is the camera, which is only found on the Gear 2. So talking about both the Neo and Gear 2 here, S Health is really prominent on here. And I think one of the biggest things that I love about the Samsung wearables this year and just Samsung products in 2014, similarly to the Galaxy S5, which does share a heart rate monitor. There is one found in all the Samsung wearables and in our case, the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo, and it works really well. I really like the pedometer portion and being able to track how many steps I am taking throughout my workout or just out the day to let me know how active I am. And when I am working out heavily, I want to know what my heart rate is because in some cases I'd like to get my heart rate to a certain targeted average to just kind of let me know that I'm doing the most I can and I'm at my maximum potential. Also, I'm a big fan of the IR Blaster because when I am sitting on the couch, I don't want to be using a remote. Remotes are so 2000. People want to use cool new things and I think the Samsung wearable approach is something that I personally like and it's so small it fits on your wrist and it's always accessible no matter what. And also I'd love to be able to unlock my car with my Gear 2 or Gear 2 Neo because that would be the sweetest thing ever and not being able to have to use keys that's just a whole nother approach I think wearables could go ahead and solve maybe in a few years down the line. And also I'm a big fan of the camera found in the Gear 2 as it is just slightly better in terms of quality and although it does shoot 720p HD videos similarly to the Galaxy Gear it looks a lot better and it's not as intrusive and it's not on the wrist strap which just felt horrible. It's embedded into the bezel. It looks a lot less intrusive and if you want to go and take pictures while you're out in public you can go ahead and do it and it's just one of those things that I actually am using now and it's not one of those things that I was really avoiding because of how intrusive it was on the Galaxy Gear. So overall I'm a big fan of the new features found on the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo. So in the end I'm a big fan of the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo. They're very comfortable smart watches and they are trust me a lot more comfortable than the Galaxy Gear and offer a lot of other integrations that I think Samsung took from the Galaxy Gear and really improved on in the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo. So some of my favorite features on both devices here are the heart rate monitor, the fact that both are IP67 certified, which means that you can really get rough with these devices and they should be okay in water and other substances, and the fact that you can change the bands out, which allows users to get creative and funky depending on their season, which is again one of the attributes the original Galaxy Gear did lack. I think the App Store has a lot of potential for both devices. I think developers need to kind of see why they should be developing applications. And I think Samsung is to blame for a lot of this and they should be paying developers or giving them much more incentives than they are receiving for Pebble or just developing for other ecosystems to kind of get that push because think about it. When the developers are on board, there's a lot more applications. People are going to want to optimize those applications on cool new technology such as the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo. So I think that's one of the biggest lacking attributes found on both devices. And I think the battery life is pretty solid throughout the Gear 2 and Gear 2 Neo. Two days is perfect for me. I don't mind charging it at the end of the day because it can do a lot of smart things that a Rolex or Tank Tower would not be able to do for me. So the biggest question you need to ask yourself, is the camera a make or break thing for you? If it's not, then definitely go for the Gear 2 Neo, which is $199 and comes in orange, gray, and black, and I think that's probably the one most consumers will be going for, but if you do really want the camera and you want a little bit more metal on your smartwatch that kind of has the more luxurious appeal, then go for the Gear 2. It comes in metallic orange, titan silver, and in brown gold, and retails for $299, and I'll let you guys know in the description below how much the additional bands do cost, because that is one of the coolest things I think a smartwatch can have, is being able to swap out the bands and kind of get funky in that sense. But overall, any smartwatch you choose here is fantastic, and both are really Really going to complement your Samsung device really nicely. Thank you guys so much for watching this video where we directly compare the brand new Samsung Gear 2 to the also brand new Samsung Gear 2 Neo. If you guys enjoyed this video and are very excited for wearables, go and throw me a like down below. And while you're at it, drop me a comment down below letting me know which wearable you'd pick up, whether it's the Gear 2, Gear 2 Neo, or an other wearable such as the Pebble Steel or the original Pebble. Finally, go and subscribe to the channel to be notified when a brand new giveaway comes out or more wearable content like you've seen in this video. Because trust me guys, 2014 is the year of wearables and we got a lot more coming throughout the year. Thank you guys once again and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Mm -hmm.